Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Mad Meta Magic, where we try to make the magic meta mad. Now, today, we will be playing Selesnia Hardened Scales. Um, recently saw another one of these lists pop up and uh, kind of looked interesting to me. This one was actually running Steel Overseer again, of all things. So um, it, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit, and I, I'm looking forward to playing this. I think these decks are super powerful, um, and they're, they're best hands are like absolutely crazy nuts but their worst hands seem to suffer quite a bit so what is hardened scales for those of you that don't know i'll do a quick deck tech hardened scales is a one mana green enchantment that says if a one one counter would be placed on a creature you control you put that many plus one 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 counters on it instead so the deck is centered around abusing one one counters as frequently as possible so what are the best ways to do that well the first thing we have is animation module which is whenever one or more one one counters are put on a creature you control you can pay one and if you do you get a one one servo token um, you can also pay three tap it and put another kind of any counter you have on to a permanent that you control uh less useful but it is a mana sink in the late game um, then we have the main bread and butter to this deck, which is modular creatures. So for those of you who didn't play during the original Mirrodin block, modular is a mechanic that says, uh, generally the creature is of zero power and toughness, but, um, enters with the battlefield with some number of 1-1 counters on it, equal to the number after the modular keyword. So Arcbound Worker is a one mana 1-1, one, one, um, that's effectively a one mana 0-0 zero, zero with a 1-1 one, one counter on it when it enters. <clears throat> But when a creature with modular dies, you can choose another creature that is an artifact creature on the battlefield and put all of the counters that were on your modular creature onto uh, your other artifact creature. So the big payoff for this is something like Ravager, which is a two mana modular 1-1 one, one, that you can sack an artifact to put a 1-1 one, one counter on Ravager. So I'm sure that you see the interaction with hardened scales here. But um, you can sack an artifact, put two 1-1 counters on Ravager. You can sack your whole board, put a ton of 1-1 counters on Ravager. Then sack Ravager to itself. Put all of the counters on Ravager onto your, uh, like, your Ink Moth Nexus or your Walking Ballista. And um, interestingly enough, like, if I sack an Arcbound Worker, I get a Modular Trigger targeting Ravager. I get a counter for Ravager's ability, which is actually two counters due to Harden Scales. And then the Modular goes off and I get... However many counters are on Arcbound Worker plus one because I have hardened skills and just like it goes out of control so fast. We also have a card called the Ozolith, which effectively acts like a hardened scales, kind of, but in a way that is much more broken on certain circumstances. So whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield for any reason, if it had counters on it, you put those counters on the Ozolith. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you can move all the counters from Ozolith onto a creature. So if I have an Arcbound Worker and it dies... I can put a 1-1 one, one counter on the Ozolith, because the Arcbound Worker is a 1-1. One, one. If it had multiple counters on it, I can put all of those counters on the Ozolith. Um, so on and so forth. And Hardened Scales, for moving counters onto the Ozolith, doesn't count. But for moving counters off of the Ozolith, does count. Because it's when it's put on a creature. So, uh, the entire deck is very low CMC, curving out at 2 um, basically to take advantage of Luris, unless we need a gem raiser in the main, which would be the only reason why we couldn't play Luris anymore as a companion. Um, and the rest of the deck is basically proliferate ways to take advantage of our constructs like Metallic Mimic, Hangerback Walker, Walking Ballista, Welding Jar, and a bunch of lands, um, because we have Ink Moth Nexuses and Blink Moth Nexuses to stack counters onto to attack evasively. Ancient Stirrings is basically the reason the deck plays green, because you can dig deep trying to find the Ozolith and whatever card you need to finish off your opponent. It's almost an aggro combo deck, and uh, that's approximately four minutes of deck tech, so I'm going to go ahead and take this into a competitive modern league, and we'll see what happens. I'll see you guys in round one. Alrighty. <clears throat> round one, here we go. Start by revealing Luris. Um, well, the hand is not explosive, but we have an Ozolith and we have Ancient Stirrings. Uh, and two Metallic Mimics, so I'm going to keep. Opponent starts Forgotten Cave, which tells me they're probably Dredge. I'm going to start with an Ancient Stirrings, and we are going to reveal... Oof, I think... I think it's going to be Walking Ballista. Well, is it going to be Walking Ballista? Yeah, I think it's going to be Walking Ballista. Rest of the bottom, any order. Pass the turn. Opponent plays Renin 6. Okay. The uptick Renin 6 to 4, which does... Uh, this does change our game plan a little bit. So, Ancient Stirrings. Let's get a... 
Ooh, I like Welding Jar because we can protect ourselves from Renin Six, but I like Ravager a lot more. Man, if Ravager was a construct, we would have some very broken things going on. But it is a beast. I think I'm actually taking Welding Jar here is correct. And then I'm going to Ancient Stirrings again. And this time, this time I think I take either, it's either Ravager or Steel Overseer. I think it's going to be Ravager. We have a Ballista. We're going to go for uh, kind of an explosive finish, I think. <coughs> opponent Inquisition, they get to take anything they want out of our hand, which probably is going to be the Ozolith or Ravager. Those are two of our scariest spells. They could also take Walking Ballista, which would be reasonable. They take Welding Jar, that is also reasonable. Opponent plays a Tarmogoyf. We untap and draw Temple Garden. So, play Temple Garden tapped, play the Ozolith, pass the turn. So my opponent is playing Jund. They uptick Renin 6, play second Tarmogoyf, hit us for two. We untap and draw Throne of Geth, <clears throat> play Phyrexia's Core, play Metallic Mimic, name Construct, play Metallic Mimic. If they have a bolt, they'll use it now. They do. Okay. Name Construct. I guess that does kind of throw a wrench in my plans. We'll play Ballista on one, pass the turn. Yeah, this hand was actually way too slow. Kind of unfortunate. Opponent is going to kill Metallic Mimic. Alright. Sad days. Opponent attacks us for 8. Take 8. We untap and drop Branch Loft Pathway. Play Ravager. Play Throne of Geth. <clears throat> Sack the Ozolith. Proliferate. Sack... Branch Loft Pathway. Sack Ravager. Maybe I shouldn't have sacked the Ozolith, because I could have put those counters on the Ozolith there. Go to combat. Kill Renin 6. Yeah, I've definitely misplayed this game in addition to not taking the correct line. Or mulliganing when I was supposed to. Alright, yep. <clears throat> Let's just play this the proper way, shall we? Why am I so washed out? Is it because I'm too far away? It might be because I'm too far away. I'll, I'll scoot up. Okay. <clears throat> versus Jund, kind of want Path, and uh, what do I not need versus Jund? That is going to be too slow. I think one Throne of Geth and one Metallic Mimic can come out. Those cards are great, just uh, a little bit slow in the current context, I think. So start by revealing Luris. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be fast, so we'll keep. So we're going to start Hardened Scales into Double Arcbound Worker, or Arcbound Worker Blink Moth if we get Thought Seized. All right, so start Razor Verge Thicket, Harden Scales, pass the turn. Opponent starts Overgrown Tomb, untapped, Inquisition. So they take Arcbound Worker. We untap, we draw Harden Scales. So play Blink Moth, play Harden Scales, play Arcbound Worker. Pass the turn. The only bad thing about playing Harden Scales and then Arcbound Worker here is it still dies to like a Lightning Bolt, and we have nowhere we can put the 1-1 one -one counters because we can't animate a uh, Blink Moth right now, which sucks. Yep, opponent recognizes that fact. And now we are drawing dead. I missed a damage there, because I didn't attack with a uh, Blink Moth. Alright, we untap and draw Ancient Stirrings. So find me something good, Ancient Stirrings, like a Hanger Back. Ooh, there it is. Take Hanger Back. Rest of the bottom. Play Brushland. Play Hanger Back. Pass the turn. Opponent immediately Snap Cracks Bloodstained Mire, so they're probably going to try and bolt Hanger Back. Okay, they do not. They untap, go to combat, attack us for 5. That's fine, no blocks. Take 5, go to 15. They play Liliana. They're going to make a sack hanger back. So get 3 one ones. We untap, draw Steel Overseer. So play Phyrexia's Core, play Steel Overseer. This is a card they're going to have to terminate with extreme prejudice because we have double hardened scales, so if we actually get a... Uh, Steel Overseer without summoning sickness, all of our 1-1s one become 3-3s. Three no, they become 4-4s four because it's two additional counters. That's pretty gross. Do we need to hold up Phyrexia's core or do we get in for damage? I think we get in for damage. So animate Blink Moth, go to combat, hit our opponent, hit Liliana, opponent, and opponent. Okay, opponent untaps. They Fatal Push the Overseer, as is required for them to live. They play Scavenging Ooze, hit us for 6, we go to 9. Untap. 
We draw a uh, branch loft pathway. So play branch loft pathway. Put Luris into our hand. Play Luris. Go to combat. Attack them for two. I mean, Luris also is like a must kill here. They can kind of mitigate us playing um, some spells from the grave, but no need. This is the one problem with Jund versus this deck, is Jund is generally a pile of removal spells, and I kept a threat light hand. It had some serious power, but Inquisition took a relevant spell super early. We untap. We draw Welding Jar. This is unfortunate. Um, I don't actually think we can win, but I'll play it out. So play Welding Jar. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They go to combat. They attack us. So we are going to chump Tarmogoyf. And then activate Phyrexia's core. Sacking our chump blocker. Gaining a life. Then taking two. Opponent can eat two creatures. So we're going to take four here and go to four. But our opponent mostly tapped out to do that. We untap. Draw Darksteel Citadel. Uh, this does not inspire confidence. Play Darksteel Citadel. Pass the turn. Yep, that's going to do it. All right. My apologies for the bad keep and the uh, punts. So I will see you guys in round two, and hopefully I'll play better. All right. Round two, here we go. Opponent will be probably on the play. Yep. So reveal Luris. Okay, I do like this hand. Why? Oh, yeah, that's a noise. I tried to click keep, but clicked mulligan twice. Oh, how do you even accomplish that? There's no excuse. A uh, moto lagged. The button stayed in the same place and you just kept clicking, you moron. <laughs> and now I have to mulligan it again because I have no lands. All right. We'll keep four of these. Good God. Put back Branch Loft Pathway, Throne of Geth, Darksteel Citadel. Sweet Jesus. I even waited to record until I was like awake and fully caffeinated. <laughs> it's just like Kano EXE has encountered a problem and needs to close. Uh, we draw the Ozolith, so play Brushland. Um, play Arden Scales. Pass the turn. Oh, I am going to get some rage comments about that one. And worse yet, people aren't going to believe that I'm like silly or ignorant enough to actually... Oh, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, opponent has a Thalia. Uh, because they would be playing Death and Taxes, and I wouldn't have cast Ancient Stirrings for a second land first. People are not going to believe that I am mechanically incompetent enough to actually have done that. People are going to think that was intentional for like, Kato, you moron, you're just doing this for views. It's like, no, I actually legitimately fumbled the interface that bad. Ugh, okay, so... Uh, we're probably going to need Path as an additional answer to Thalia and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to cut a Metallic Mimic. Well, no, Metallic Mimic is part of some of our most explosive hands. I'm going to cut a Throne of Geth. And I'm only going to bring in... Well, I'm going to drop a Welding Jar and a Land. We're going to try it like this. Let's try it with a little less suck this time, huh? All right. I'd love to play first. Move my hand away from the keyboard and the area to click. This hand is too slow. It's reasonable because we have Ink Moth Nexuses and Steel Overseers and a path. So I guess I'm going to keep seven. Um, I'm going to start with Lanawar Reborn, actually. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, me clicking in that pattern was me expecting a different dialog box. There's just no other excuse. <laughs> okay, we untap, we draw the Ozolith. Um, we'll play a Razor Verge Thicket. And then we'll play a Steel Overseer. I could have played an Ink Moth Nexus there, but I don't want to incentivize my opponent to remove Steel Overseer any more than they already are. So pass the turn. Opponent up ticks Aether Vial. Plays a second Snow Covered Plains into a Leon and Arbiter. I will not graft onto Leon and Arbiter. So what this is telling me is my opponent likely has a Ghost Quarter effect of some kind. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the Ozolith. I will graft onto this Steel Overseer. And then pass. So we don't want to stack up onto Ink Moth Nexus right away. And the reason we don't want to do that is because we have the Ozolith. Um, we don't want to incentivize our opponent to destroy lands more than they already are. We want them to try and deal with our creatures first, I guess. Sorry, I had a point there and like I completely dropped it because my brain just like failed. 
Um, so put a place field of ruin. They might just go for the takeout ink moth here, which is completely reasonable. We don't have the mana to animate it and put counters on it to put them on Ozolith. But the other option for our play last turn was to play Ink Moth, animate it with its own mana, play our other Steel Overseer and put counters on. This was safer, technically. So opponent goes to combat. They attack for two. Block here. We'll put a 1-1 counter on Steel Overseer. They'll give protection from Colorless. Ultimately, this is a push. Then they're going to path Steel Overseer. That was wrong, because that put more counters on Ozolith. And now they may not have mana for Field of Ruin. They play a second giver. We untap. We draw Arcbound Worker. Play Ink Moth Nexus. Animate Ink Moth Nexus. Ugh! I hate that it lets me do that. It shouldn't stack them the same if the Man Land has Summoning Sickness. That's actually a huge problem. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to play Walking Ballista. Now, I know, and in, in generally when I get into a situation like that, I try and animate using the proper mana and all that. <sighs> but it doesn't always work. Um, okay, opponent just gives up. Cool. <laughs> we won a game through incompetence. Moving on to game three. All right, reveal Luris. This hand is not keepable, unfortunately. There's just not enough going on. In a deck full of, like, one and two drops and zero drops, you probably only want one to two lands for the most part. Possibly, like, three, depending on your hand. Okay, this one I can get behind. So, put Phyrexia's Core on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by playing Lanowar Reborn Tapped. Then I'm going to play two Hardened Scales. Then I'm going to play Ballista or Hangerback Walker. Probably Ballista, because uh, my opponent is playing Path to Exile. Now, this gets bad if my opponent does have a Thalia, because that means I can only play one Hardened Scales a turn, but still a gigantic Walking Ballista will probably cause my opponent to scoop, unless they immediately have a path. I will not move uh, a counter onto Leon and Arbiter. We untap and draw a second Ballista, which makes me feel slightly better about my life choices. So, play Hardened Scales. Play Hardened Scales. Pass the turn. Now, I suspect from the way that my opponent's playing, they do have a Field of Ruin, but this ultimately doesn't matter. Uh, it can shrink our... Okay, they have a Ghost Quarter. It can shrink our uh, resultant Ballista by up to a factor of two, which they're going to do, because why wouldn't they? They hit us for two. We untap. We draw Darksteel Citadel. Play Brushland, just in case my opponent is running Kataki. There's always the chance, right? Play Ballista going to enter with three counters. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Two mana. Two mana path. Kill Thalia. Then we're going to kill Arbiter and not get a basic. That's way more important because um, my opponent could have like another Ghost Quarter. Okay, we draw Darksteel Citadel. So play Darksteel Citadel. And... Uh... Yeah, we're going to play Hangerback Walker this turn. If my opponent has Arbiter second Ghost Quarter, we might be in trouble, but... Pass the turn. If they have another path, that also kind of sucks. They untap. They play a Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. They get Batter Skull. We untap. Draw a path. Play Darksteel Citadel. Put Walking Ballista on four. Ping down Mystic. Yeah, game's over. <laughs> They're not going to ever resolve a creature, because... For four mana, we get a free lightning bolt, basically, and they're stuck on mana. So, all right, everything worked out. Don't worry about it. I'll see you guys in round three. All right, here we go, round three. Uh, reveal Luris. We are on the draw. This hand is probably fine. We can Ancient Stirrings for a land, then play like Hardened Skills Ozolith, then play Ballista and Ravager. So, we also have another uh, Ancient Stirrings. It's probably humans. It is humans. Opponent's going to start Noble. We untap. Draw Forest. A new plan. Play Forest. Play Hardened Scales. Why did I click Ancient Stirring? Anyway, this is less than fine. <laughs> Take Hanger back. Oh, pass the turn. Oh no, they're going to freebooter me and I'm so going to regret this. Uh, one green spells all look the same. Oh my, it's like I can't stop punting. I physically am unable to stop punting right now. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that, but I have been, and it's right now. Opponent plays Mantis Rider. Okay, so we get hit for three. We get a, a 
four, we go to 16. We untap and drop Brushland. So play Brushland, play Hardened Scales, play the Ozolith, pass the turn. So fun fact, I got a Hydro Flask. Um, Cause I've been meaning to shell out for a higher quality fitness water bottle. Um, I had this uh, junky, like, it was like a huge purple um, water jug with a, like a straw and everything in the lid. And uh, I took it to the gym for the first time like this season and by this season i mean like post hanging out with the family for a few months um and uh five seconds within me getting there uh somebody knocked it off of this like raised box i had set it down on while i was taking my coat off and it smashed and water went everywhere it just split all the way down the seam and i was like i need to get a uh <laughs> better one all right so opponent chooses walking ballista which is reasonable and then they play aether vial they hit us for four we untap draw another ozolith so i have a plan we're gonna try and hit metallic mimic with this ancient stirrings all right i did not i kind of want a fourth land but i think steel overseer is gonna be better play brush land and uh we'll play hanger back x2 pass the turn opponent untaps Aether Vial ticking up to one. Gonna play as Reflector Mage. That's super annoying. But at least we get some counters on the Ozolith. <laughs> Opponent hits us for five. Sure. We untap. Draw Ink Moth. So play Ink Moth. Play Steel Overseer. Play Ravager. Move to combat. Put the counters from Ozolith onto Ravager. Pass the turn. You can see how these things interact to put a bunch of 1-1 counters on stuff very quickly. If my opponent can't kill us this turn, we can just go all in on uh, Ink Moth, potentially. Not super likely, because my opponent can just stack stuff up on a Mantis Rider. Alright. And we can't use Walking Ballista. So we would need to draw some form of removal to get around the Mantis Rider, I think. They attack with both, because there's really no reason not for them to. And if they have a Thalia's Lieutenant, we just die. Yep. Okay. Well, opponent knew what was up uh, the instant they saw Hardened Scales and named the correct thing. That does mean we are going to need to bring in Path here. We'll drop a Throne of Geth, a Land, and uh, probably a Welding Jar. If they have removal, it's going to be Bounce or Exile... Um, it's not going to be destruction. So Welding Jar is generally only good as sack fodder or uh, making a block or an attack better. All right, we'll play first. Reveal Lurus. Um, I will keep this hand. There's a lot of early action here that should, in theory, be quite good. So start Razor Verge Thicket into Hardened Scales. And I am going to play out Welding Jar just in case. Pass the turn. Opponent starts unclaimed territory, naming human. Into an Aether Vial. We untap and draw Path, which is a good sign. Play Darksteel Citadel. Then play Hangerback Walker. We probably don't have the luxury of uh, ticking up Hangerback Walker, at least without like a Ravager or something. Um, because if we stack this too high, my opponent is very quickly going to get something that can bounce it or exile it. Okay. Opponent plays Cavern on Human. And they're passing. Alright. We untap. We draw Brushland. So, Shock Temple Garden. Ancient Stirrings. I like the Ozolith, but I think I'm just going to get a Walking Ballista. Rest of the bottom. Play out Ballista, because I want one on board basically ASAP. Go to combat. Attack for two. Head our opponent down to 18. Pass the turn. Alright, opponent ticks up Aether Vial to two. Then passes. We untap. We draw Hangerback Walker. Play Brushland. What could they have on two? Metallic Mage, Thalia's Lieutenant, Phantasmal Image, Kite Sail Freebooter. Anything that unsummons or exiles? I think that's all on three. I'm debating about whether I want to play Hangerback Walker first to avoid the unsummon from like a... What is it called? Reflector Mage. Next turn, 
or if I want to attack leaving mana open first. Yeah, I guess we just attack leaving mana open first. I can always put two 1-1 one -one counters on Ballista. This is fine, even if they flash something into block, because I have Welding Jar. Okay. Then I think I'm just going to play Hanger back on one. Leave up Path? That seems reasonable. All right, pass the turn. Knowing my luck, they kept a handful of Skyclave Apparitions. Dismember. All right. Well, I guess we pig him twice. This is at least a lot of damage. Okay, opponent is going to vial in a two drop. Unsettled Mariner. That's all right. Because we have path and we can pay the one to act or to target something with path. They take up Aether Vial to three. The real concern is Reflector Mage, I think. Actually, the real concern is Skyclave Apparition, but. Opponent plays a Horizon Canopy. There's Reflector Mage. Opponent bounces Hanger Back. So we can't play Hanger Back next turn. And they're going to Vial in a Mantis Rider and attack us for five. Okay, I'm going to path Mantis Rider. All right, we untap. Really want to draw a Ravager. Oh, it's a Ravager. Play Ravager. So, put a counter on Hanger Back. Then we just pass the turn, I think. Because anything they do short of sudden death or sudden shock, which they're not running because Ravager is not common anymore, um, we can respond to. So my opponent is going to play Skyclave Apparition. Let's see what they target. Ravager. That seems reasonable. Sack Darksteel Citadel. Put two counters on Ravager. Sack Welding Jar. Put two counters on Ravager. Sack Hanger Back. Put two counters on Ravager. Make four flyers. Opponent is going to vial in something in response. A Reflector Mage to bounce Ravager so we don't immediately stack up the Hanger Back Walker to absurd proportions. I think you did that in the wrong order. All right, pick up Ravager. Get our tokens. Opponent exiles nothing with Skyclave. They attack us for two. Make that four. Take two, go to 14. Untap. If I draw a Walking Ballista, they die. Get a Metallic Mimic. Go to combat. Hit them for four in the air and take them to two. Then play Hanger Back on two. Pass the turn. Hanger Back Ravager Harden Scales is one of the nastiest things that you can do early in a modern game to anybody. It's so powerful. And like my opponent's only answer to it wasn't even that great. And next turn, I'm going to play Ravager again. And then, like, what are they going to do? Opponent has to sack Horizon Canopy to try and draw something they can use to answer this. Pretty sure. They play Thalia's Lieutenant. They can go for a big attack, but it doesn't kill us. There's no, like, human with unsummoned, like, Echoing Truth stapled onto it, to my knowledge. So we just chump. Take eight, go to six, make some Thopters. Oh, Plague Engineer. You got me. All right, Walking Ballista off the top one time. Yep, unfortunately that doesn't do it. I was right, there is no human with Echoing Truth, but there is... There is a, a shrivel on a body. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in round four. All righty. Round four, here we go. Start by revealing Luris. I think we've been on the draw every match. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep this. This looks decent. Worker, Ravager, and Walker seem pretty good together. So my plan is Pendlehaven, Worker, Ink Moth, or Blink Moth, Nexus, Ravager, and then turn three, Lanawar, Reborn, Walker. So start Pendlehaven, play Arcbound, Worker. Pass the turn. Opponent is some kind of blue deck. And we're in the 1-2 bracket, so they could be anything. They play a Flooded Strand, so they are probably um, Control. Go to Combat. Attack for one. No blocks by the opponent. New plan. Play Hardened Scales. Then play Lanawar Reborn. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks Flooded Strand. They're probably Blue-White Control. Or Jeskai Control. Just judging by the way they're playing. Opponent Fields of Ruin are Lanawar Reborn. 
They get a planes, which tells me they do have, like, path. Well, play Ink Moth. Play Ravager. Opponent should immediately path if they've got it to try and get us to react. So, pass the turn. They untap. They play an island. And they foretell a card. Probably Doomscar or the Counterspell. Alright. We untap. We draw another Arcbound Worker. Play... Blink Moth Nexus. Play Arcbound Worker. Animate Ink Moth. Go to combat. Attack with everybody. Pendlehaven Ink Moth. Sack Arcbound Worker. Modular onto Ink Moth. Uh, do I want to go for the full stack on Ink Moth? They have to have Path, but they're playing like they have it. No, because it involves sacking Ravager. We'll wait and see if they have anything else. Yep, there it is. Sack Ink Moth. Counter on, or two counters on Ravager. Hit them for seven. Take them to eleven. Pass the turn. Now my opponent probably has Doomscar, and they may activate it here. At which point, activating Pendlehaven was a mistake because... Well, no, that's not. Never mind. Because <laughs> uh, Modular only triggers if you have a surviving artifact creature. You can't let a Wrath go off, then animate a Man Land, and then target with Modular. So I don't think I've actually made a mistake here. So this is either the Foretold Counterspell, the Foretold Wrath, which is Doomscar, or some kind of Foretold Threat. That's my prediction. I've not run into any Foretold cards in Modern yet, period. So uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, opponent plays a land. They play Jace the Mind Sculptor. They're going to Unsummon Ravager. So we're going to have Ravager sack itself and Modular onto the Arcbound Worker. Then our opponent passes. We untap, draw an Ancient Stirrings. Cast Ancient Stirrings. Mm, pick up Animation Module, though we're not doing anything with it this turn. Play a Forest. Animate Blink Moth. Go to combat. Attack Jace. Attack our opponent. Kill Jace. Hit our opponent to three. Pass the turn. We are once again giving up on Modular for now. I could have killed my opponent in two hits with the Blink Moth, but the odds they have single target removal or another Field of Ruin is high enough that killing Jace is the ultimate priority, especially when they play Jace as a 4-mana Unsummon, because that means they either are relying on this, which is a Wrath in Exile, or they are confident, or they don't have, well... Ah, Behold the Multiverse. This is actually not that bad of a spell. Um, I don't know if it's worth playing in Modern, but it's like almost worth the fact that it's an instant on the front half means that this this is like a glimmer of genius equivalent and glimmer of genius did see some play in modern for a little bit uh, i remember there was like a teamer flash deck um does having five mana matter versus four mana i'm not sure but i don't think so we're gonna play an animation module animate blink moth go to combat Okay, opponent is Cracking Flooded Strand. I should have waited, because if this is Cryptic Tap, I could have got him with the Blink Moth. That was actually a huge mistake. Yeah, if you suspect Cryptic Tap and you have Man Lands, you need to go to combat, especially if you have a single lethal creature. Wait for the Cryptic Tap at the beginning of a, uh, combat, and then animate your Man Land. I used to do that all the time, um, playing Time Warps and playing against Man Land decks with Time Warps. And I don't know why that slipped my mind, because that was a critical moment. Mm, they're going to return our Blink Moth to hand. If I had a Ravager, I could sack this and counter the Cryptic Command, but I don't. Um, okay, we'll put uh, Blink Moth back in hand. I was going to activate Animation Module, but I realized if my opponent is relying on an actual Destroy Wrath, Hangerback Walker here is way better. They also can't force a negation it, so we know there's not going to be a free counter spell. And if they actually cast Wrath, we have two uh, two individual attackers, both of which are lethal due to Pendlehaven. So my opponent would have to have Wrath plus Wrath, or Wrath plus two pieces of removal. Which, considering they're playing like their removal light, they probably don't have. There I am, turning red again. Opponent plays to Fairy. They're definitely unsummoning something. They bounce Hanger back. And they scoop. Alright, so versus control i've got a feeling we may want like nature's claim in here just for like some 
anti-anti-artifact stuff. Uh, we're definitely keeping the welding jars. I think Metallic Mimic and Steel Overseer are going to be too slow, so I'm going to drop one of each. Creature is going to be the easiest type for my opponent to answer, which is why I'm keeping Throne of Geth over Metallic Mimic and uh, Steel Overseer. And I still want some Steel Overseers and Metallic Mimics because I don't want to cut too many creatures. I could cut a land here. Actually, I'm going to. I'm going to cut a Lanawar Reborn and bring back a Steel Overseer. And by that, I mean a Metallic Mimic. And I want to keep my uh, basics in the deck because um, of... Actually... Yeah, I want to keep my untap lands, and I want to keep my basics in the deck. Simply because my opponent is playing Field of Ruin. This hand has the potential to be sick, but uh, not without, like, two lands and a creature. This is quite a bit better. I'm going to keep. And I'm going to put back Brushland. It's unlikely that I need multiple green sources, at least for a little bit. Opponent starts Flooded Strand. We untap and draw Hanger Back Walker. Play Temple Garden and Ancient Stirrings. I'm going to get a Ravager, send the rest to the bottom, pass the turn. My opponent cracks Flooded Strand on our end step, gets a Raugrin Triome, untaps, plays a Field of Ruin. All right. I'm going to play Hangerback Walker first, as I suspect my opponent um, will use a counter spell on this. If they have removal, um, Hangerback Walker is one of the worst spells they can use removal on. And all of our spells right now are kind of bad against counter spells. I also played Blink Moth because I'm trying to bait my opponent into using Field of Ruin early. Okay, opponent does not play a third land, meaning that they have a handful of spells. Play Ink Moth. Mm. Play Ravager. And we're being careful to play the Ravager that we revealed. Okay, we get Spell Snared. Pass the turn. Opponent opts. Looking for that land. They found it. We untap. We draw an Arcbound Worker. Play Worker. Play Ravager. Alright, pass the turn. When it flashes in Snapcaster Mage. You can tell that they're upset they had to opt for that land because they could have Snapcaster Spell Snared that Ravager otherwise if they'd just drawn it naturally. And uh, that probably would have been the end of the game, but... All right, Puta plays a Glacial Fortress, goes to combat, nothing. So they don't have a Wrath. We untap, draw another Ink Moth, play Ink Moth, play Ballista on one. Okay, so they're going to Snapcaster Spell Snare, probably. Yep. But this is exactly why I played Ballista on one. I, I mean, I could have played it on two, but then they probably would have had a, a heavier counter spell. Because I had a second Ballista, I can play it on one. And then what I can do is sack Arcbound Worker, put a counter on Ballista, put a counter on Ravager. I guess maybe it was better to play it on two and just risk the heavier counter spell. <laughs> uh, this, I would not play this deck unless your math skills are very strong. If you've got ma very strong math and logic, uh, you'll do better than I'm doing right now, that's for sure. All right. That's annoying. Ping down a Snapcaster. So we lose the Arcbound Worker modular, but get to keep the Ravager. Pass the turn. Puna plays a second Field of Ruin. Plays a Rest in Peace. That's fine. We don't really need Lurus. Puna leaves up a Field of Ruin activation, which is probably what they're going to do this turn. We untap and draw Brushland. So, Animate Ink Moth. Animate Ink Moth. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent blocks with Snapcaster. So animate Blink Moth. They may field Blink Moth here. They do. Alright, get a forest. Now the question is... Yeah, I don't really think there's an answer. We just trade and we put the counters onto an Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, they it doesn't die. That's why they added Rest in Peace. Wow! Alright. I forgot that Rest in Peace stops things from having death triggers. Now we draw another Ink Moth. Time to get there with 1-1 Flyer Beatdown. Go to combat. Attack them for two, in fact. Do they field an Ink Moth? Sure. Get a forest. And they got a blocker. All right. That's going to be game. I don't know if we bring in Gem Razor for this to deal with Rest in Peace. I don't know if that's worth it. If they have Stony Silence, maybe it is. 
It does also help to up our creature count. I'll drop a Throne of Geth for it. All right, we'll play first. Uh, yeah, Walking Ballista is probably going to get countered, but double Harden Scales early is definitely worth it. Any threat we could possibly resolve at that point becomes amazing. Play Harden Scales. Pass the turn. We untap. We draw an Ancient Stirrings. Play an Ancient Stirring. Get a Ravager. Rest of the bottom. Play Razor Verge Thicket. Play Harden Scales. Okay. Pun of Cracks Flooded Strand. They may have Spell Pierce. They just get a Triome. They untap. Play Glacial Fortress. Foretell their card advantage spell, presumably. Ancient Stirrings. Let's get an Arcbound Worker. Rest of the bottom, any order. Play Ink Moth, then play Ballista. Okay, pass the turn. Opponent untaps, plays Field of Ruin, then passes. We untap, draw Ravager. Play Brushland, play Worker, play Ravager. They're gonna path Ballista. So ping him, ping him, get pathed, get a forest. Play Ravager, then pass the turn. Opponent beholds the multiverse. All right, put it on taps. Plays an island. They have cryptic mana. They play rest in peace. So if we want any of our modular triggers to go off, we have to do them right now. I think it's worth it. Anime Ink Moth. Sack Worker, Modular on the Ink Moth. It's going to be quite large. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. They probably have removal, but... Yeah, all right. Well... All right. Play Hanger back. Hopefully they don't have Spell Snare... Oh, it doesn't even matter. It's because it can't die anymore due to rest in peace. So we're just playing two mana three threes. I should have just kept my um, three three creatures, probably. Opponent opts. They untap. Opponent plays Jace. Probably should just brainstorm here. They unsummon hanger back. We untap. Draw horizon canopy. Go to combat. Attack Jace. All right. Yeah, we're not winning this one. Okay. I'll see you guys in round five. Round five, here we go. We started by revealing Luris. We got some Arcbound Workers. The only way that this hand gets better is if we start Ozolith or um, Hardened Scales as like our first draw. Opponent starts Flooded Strand. We draw another Ravager. So play Brushland. Play Worker. Pass the turn. Odds are this is another control deck. Kind of sad to see that they are, uh, if it is a control deck, it's kind of sad to see that they're at the bottom of the uh, metagame right now. Ketria Trion tells me it's either Scapeshift or Uro based though. Okay, this is definitely like whatever Omnath deck currently exists. Not Uro. Play Darksteel Citadel. Go to combat. Attack our opponent for one. Play Hanger Back on one. We're either getting remanded or mana leaked if uh, this is getting countered. Lightning Helix Arcbound Worker. Interesting. All right. If they're playing Lightning Helix, the odds that they're playing the Omnath deck goes up because without Uro, that deck needs more ways to recoup life loss. Play Ink Moth. Play Ravager. Opponent Mana Leaks Ravager. That's reasonable. Let's put the counter on now. Pass the turn. Okay, that's exactly why I didn't let my opponent untap. I figured that they definitely had some kind of uh, way to take advantage of the... or way to respond to the add a counter trigger. Play Arcbound Worker. Play Arcbound Ravager. Go to combat. Attack them for two. Opponent passes. We untap. Draw Throne of Geth. So, play Animation Module. Play hanger back on one. Okay, go to combat. Attack with everybody. So my opponent probably needs a wrath of some kind to win. The instant they tap out, they would be susceptible to an Ink Moth Nexus stack. And if they played a wrath, we could just stack everything on Hangerback Walker and go wide. 
like wide, wide. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make any adjustments. Not versus the Omnath deck. We're just going to try and be aggressive and beat them. 24 lands seems like a lot of lands for this deck. I think I would probably cut it down to 22, maybe even 21. Okay, start by revealing Lurus. I mean, this hand is slow, but it's resilient to a Lightning Helix because of Welding Jar. So I'm going to keep. Plus, there's always the chance we top deck Hardened Skills turn one and just we're golden. Okay, play Razor Verge Thicket. Play Arcbound Worker. And play Welding Jar. Pass the turn. Opponent fetches up a Ketria Triome, then plays a Misty Rainforest. We untap, we draw Ink Moth, play Ink Moth, go to combat, attack for one. Opponent takes one, attempt to play Ravager. Ravager resolves. Opponent cracks Misty, shocks Steam Vents, then passes. Interesting. Plays Scalding Tarn, cracks Scalding Tarn. It's a hollowed fountain. They're gonna lightning helix ravager. Now I could regen ravager, but actually what I'm gonna do is sack ravager to its own ability. Modular up on the other one. Because I don't want my opponent gaining this life. Alright, we untap. We draw Lanawar Reborn. Play Forest. Play Ravager. Go to combat. Hit my opponent for two, take them to ten, and I'm going to play out my other Arcbound Worker. Now, the plan is, I'm pretty sure my opponent has a Supreme Verdict, or they're trying to play like they're going to Supreme Verdict, because they were trying to bait us into using Welding Jar. So they either have multiple pieces of damage-based removal, which we can handle just fine, or they have a Supreme Verdict, which they can't handle at all. If they have to Supreme Verdict, we can just stack everything up on Ravager, regenerate Ravager, and then uh, stack everything up on Nexus and attack. Opponent has Anger of the Gods. So, Sack Arcbound Worker. Modular onto Ravager. The only concern is now they play an untapped land and path, but we've kind of already made our decision. Arcbound Ravager now survives Anger. They play Field. They don't have Path. We untap. We draw Welding Jar. Play Lanawar Reborn. Play Welding Jar. Animate Nexus. Go to combat. Attack my opponent. I don't think they have anything. I can go up to eight counters on this. Um, I'm just going to do this. I can't kill them this turn. Because I could go counter on Ravager to bring it to 7, counter on Ravager to bring it to 8, then sack Ravager and do 9 Infect, but that's not enough and my opponent just played a field. I could have sacked the Ink Moth Nexus to do 9 damage with the Ravager, they'd be at 1. So we'll see what they do. If they try and field Nexus, we can just sack Nexus to put a counter on Ravager, and then they don't get to search their library for a deck, or for a land. Not a deck. Come on, Kano. Words. Use your words. They got an uptick here. So, Animate Nexus, Sack Jar, Sack Jar, Sack Ravager, Modular onto Ink Moth. Yeah, that's why Ravager is crazy. Because <laughs> Ravager, Ravager board states lose to board wipes and nothing else. Like, if you have a Ravager and a bunch of artifacts on board, your opponent's generally dead a whole bunch of different ways. So that's why, like... Back when Affinity used to be a thing with Mox Opal, uh, generally you just played like Ravager Aggro and then like uh, Blue White con or Jeskai Control or Blue Red Control used to run like Sudden Shock out of the side because it was one of the only reliable ways to answer Ravager <laughs> at any point in the game. Like it was just crazy. Uh, some of the shenanigans you could get into. Um, I'll try not to ramble too much on this because, like I said, I'm not. I'm really not that great with this deck and. I don't know what was up with me today, because, like, today it was just, like, no matter what, I couldn't not punt for, like, the first two-thirds of this video. And it just, like, that was really frustrating. And, like, I tried to, like, take a little bit of a break in between some of the recording, and, and it just, like, it wouldn't stop. And so, <laughs> uh, I'm not 100% sure what was happening today, but I think 24 lands is too many. 
especially with like ancient stirrings i i would rather cut down to like 21 maybe 20 lands and just max out on ancient stirrings to help get through the deck a little bit faster uh, metallic mimic is one of the deck's most powerful payoffs so I don't know why not why we're not playing more of that because like if you start hardened scales, then you play metallic mimic, then you just dump all of the hangerback walkers and walking ballistas you have in your hand. Um, all on turn two, you can make a huge board state. Uh, and I don't know why we're not maxed out on that plan, but uh, maybe it's just not good. I'm not sure. I, I it would take some more experimentation by me with this deck, which is not a deck I play that often um it just sounded like fun because it looked a little bit different this time so besides the obvious if you're like hey no you're dumb you should have just done this you didn't play the right strategy didn't mulligan to the right cards leave it in the comments below be constructive and i will respond as best i can and uh <laughs> If you like this video, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. And remember, you can follow me on Twitch, same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, though the last few have been earlier. And, uh, yeah, I uh, hope to see you guys next time. Um, also, we have a Discord. Feel free to join. The link's in the description. There's a lot of brewing going on, lots of fun people hang out there. It's kind of like my Twitch chat, only every day of the week. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!